Uh, the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Democratic Congressman Adam Schiff. Uh, Congressman, thanks so much for joining us. What's your reaction to hearing the Senate Minority Leader uh, laughing off these attacks from the former president just days after Trump was acquitted in the impeachment trial? Well, I'm still, frankly, wrestling with his decision in that impeachment trial to uh, delay the beginning of the trial until Donald Trump was out of office and then to say, well, we can't constitutionally hold him accountable because he's out of office and then say, but nonetheless, he's guilty. Um, I found that inexcusable. Uh, clearly, he's trying to somehow thread the needle um, between uh, discrediting the former president for his role in inciting that insurrection and all the damage he's done to our democracy but somehow retain the, the support of Trump voters. I don't know how you do that. Um, but one thing I think Mitch McConnell does understand, and that is the Republican Party is not going to recover until it purges uh, itself of Donald Trump. It needs to be a party of ideology again and not uh, simply a cult around Donald Trump. As you know, Congressman, uh, Democrats, they're moving quickly right now uh, with a 9-11 style commission to investigate uh, the uh, January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. But Republicans are warning this shouldn't uh, relegate uh, the impeachment and shouldn't necessarily be used to attack the former president. Is it possible for this to be truly bipartisan, this new commission? Is there any chance Trump supporters potentially could accept the results of the investigation? Uh, it is. It really needs to be a bar bipartisan, really nonpartisan effort. Uh, and I think it can be done. If you look back at the 9-11 Commission, the Bush administration uh, opposed that effort. A lot of Republicans opposed that effort because they thought that it would be all about uh, Bush and blaming Bush for 9-11. Uh, nonetheless, some great commissioners were chosen that had very good leadership. And it came to be, you know, the, uh, the, the high watermark for any commission uh, its recommendations had tremendous buy-in with the public, with the Congress. A lot of what, what motivated, frankly, were the victims of 9-11. Uh, and here, I, I think there's going to be a similar public demand that this commission be established, but that it also be, you know, ruthlessly nonpartisan, that it, it uh, you know, learn why we were so vulnerable, how this happened. It will grapple, I hope, with the issues of white nationalism, domestic terrorism, but it will also account for the president's role uh, in inciting that attack on the Capitol. While I have you, Congressman, let me get your thoughts on some other important issues. Democrats uh, uh, are navigating divisions within their own party right now over several important issues, a $15 minimum wage, uh, increased student loan for, uh, forgiveness. Why is President Biden shooting down progressive ideas when his middle-of-the-road approach isn't necessarily winning any Republican support on his top priority of this nearly $2 trillion COVID relief package? Well, personally, I, I wish he wasn't because I think, uh, you know, bigger is better. Uh, and it would be, I think, a tremendous thing for uh, young people, helping them get out of debt, particularly a lot of young people of color, uh, to forgive as much of that student debt as possible. Uh, so I support going to the whole 50,000 number. Uh, if the president needs time to get his Justice Department set up to do the analysis of what he has the power to forgive, that's one thing. But I, I wouldn't rule out of hand uh, by any means going big when it comes to forgiveness of debt. Uh, it not only uh, will be a great uh, way to help families that are struggling, uh, it will not only be, I think, a, a shot in the arm in terms of economic stimulus, um, but it also addresses those equity problems that the president has proposed, uh, has promised to address. So um, I, I understand where the president's coming from, but I, I hope he'll reconsider uh, because I think that would be a tremendous uh, service uh, we could provide uh, as we build the country back you, better. You heard the president say in the CNN town hall last night that was a non-starter as far as he's concerned. I did. Uh, you know, there are some other noises coming from the White House uh, since that, that indicate maybe he wasn't quite, uh, he isn't quite as definitive as that, and they're still open to it. And, you know, we'll be working to try to persuade him that uh, uh, this is, is an area where um, it, it would not be wise to be penny wise and pound foolish. Um, already, students uh, have uh, such a crushing burden that affects their life choices, affects what they can go into, whether they can follow their passion, whether they can make a living. Uh, and, and I can relate. Uh, for 10 years, my law stu stu student loans 
um, were more than my rent. Uh, and But I was going into a profession where I could pay them back. And a lot of Americans don't have that luxury right now. But are you suggesting that uh, some White House officials are uh, undermining what the president himself said last night? No, but I, I think that uh, there, there may have been a... Um, greater willingness in the White House to entertain something more than 10,000 than the president's remarks would indicate. I'm hoping that's so. Maybe I'm reading too much into it, but I'm hoping there's flexibility there because um, like the package uh, as a whole, I think we need to go big here. Uh, the, the, the larger threat, I think, uh, is that we go too small, that we prolong the economic suffering, uh, that the, the recession drag on longer than it needs to. The recovery has already slowed down. Uh, and this is a way of really helping a group of people that, that need the help right now uh, and also addressing those uh, issues of inequity that are so persistent. Congressman Schiff, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Wolf. There's more breaking news. We're